In this lesson, we will briefly discuss one of the biggest challenges of our time, the warming of the planet induced by human activity. And we will try to understand what our societies and we can do to face this threat. Climate change is a global problem, so it's inevitably characterized by a great complexity and many uncertainties. However, there are many things that we are quite certain. The first is that the climate change is happening. We are sure there is a widespread consensus in the scientific community that our planet has warmed about 1 degree Celsius compared to pre-industrial period which are the facts of climate change. We are already seeing the consequences of one degree of global warming through more extreme weather, rising sea level and diminishing Arctic sea highs. Changes in many extreme weather and climate events have been observed since about 1950. The frequency of heat waves has increased in large parts of Europe, Asia and Australia. And there are many regions in the world where the frequency or intensity of heavy precipitation events has increased. But the impacts of climate change are not spread uniformly across the globe. Finally, we have to remember that ocean warming dominates the increase in energy stored in the climate system, accounting for about 93% of the energy accumulated in the climate system. There is also a great and increasing consensus that the rise of anthropogenic greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide is the most important contribution to this warming. Natural factors play a very marginal role. On what will future global warming depend? For the reason, the extent of future warming depends on the quantity of greenhouse gases that will be emitted in the atmosphere in the next decades. From fossil fuel combustion, cement and steel production, deforestation, or agricultural activity, transport, and so on. Different emission pathways imply different radiative forcing and thus different temperature trajectories. Another thing we know for sure is that the warming from anthropogenic emission will persist for centuries to millennia and will continue to cause further long-term changes in the climate system. As an example, the stabilization of the ice sheet in the Greenland and Antarctica in the next century could lead to a multimeter rise of the sea level. What we can do? The last special report published by the IPCC the Governmental Panel of Climate Change shows that this is still possible to avoid a large part of future warming. It is still possible to hold the increase in the global mean temperature to well below 2 degrees above pre-industrial levels and pushing efforts to limit the warming to 1.5 degrees, as requested by the Paris Agreement signed in December 2015 and now already entering into force. If you want to limit the damage, the last IPCC reports told us that uh, we should aim to limit the future global temperature increase as low as possible. We need to peak global greenhouse emissions as soon as possible and tend to reduce this emission to almost zero in 3-4 decades. For CO2, we need a decadal staircase, having uh, emission every decade and complementary fall in last use emission, and plus ramping up CO2 removal technology. At 1.5 degree of warming compared to 2 degree, there will be less extreme weather where people live, including extreme heat and rainfall. Fewer people will be exposed to risk of rising seas. There will be lower impact on biodiversity and species. Every extra bit of warming matter, it increases the risk of long-lasting changes from sensible ecosystems, such as coral reef, as an example. The first type of thing we can do is to adapt to the changes that are unavoidable. The additional warming of at least uh, half a degree that is in the pipeline. Adaptation measures are action at different levels to minimize damage due to climate change. Through action of prevention, monitoring and warning systems, rescue and civil protection actions. There are further prevention actions regarding the different organization and territory and community. The change in buildings, infrastructures, farming and irrigation techniques. There are actions at individual or local level, as an example switching drought tolerant crops to deal with increasing risk of heat waves. But there is also the need of a transformation adaptation that requires significant more institutional, structural and financial support. As an example, moving to a new agricultural systems in area no longer suitable for current practices. As far as for mitigation, 
emission reduction actions need to be realized in an integrated and synergic way in all the key sectors of the society. Energy production and use, transports, building, industrial system, land use and human settlements. It is possible to drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the next decades, but only with a wide range of already available technology in all sectors. To evaluate the feasibility of the transition, many dimensions should be considered. Environmental, technological, economic, social, cultural, institutional, geophysical factors are relevant. Transitions toward lower greenhouse gas emissions are already underway in some city, regions, country, business and community. But uh, meeting the challenge of uh, well below two degrees would require a rapid escalation in the current scale and pace of change, particularly in the coming decades. Climate change affects its ability to achieve many sustainable development goals. Limiting warming to well below 2 degrees or 1.5 degrees will help to meet some sustainable development targets, but on the contrary, pursuing sustainable development will influence emissions, impacts and vulnerability. Responses to climate change in the form of adaptation and mitigation will also interact with sustainable development with positive effect, also known as a synergy, or negative effects, also called trade-off. The last IPCC special report for the first time discussed these interconnections. This is of a great importance since a response to climate change can be planned to maximize synergies and limit trade-off with sustainable development. In conclusion, reaching the ambitious objectives of the Paris Agreement requires a strong commitment at different levels. The international community, states, regions, municipalities, companies, investors, civil society organizations, and individuals, of course. The decisions we make today are critical in ensuring a safe and sustainable world for everyone, and the next few years are probably going to be the most important in our history.